Hi and welcome to this episode. Today I would like to show you how to align the spindle on your CNC router so that you can get a super awesome surface finish, especially when you face off some aluminum parts. So if your spindle is cross out of alignment and tilted, then normally the rears is ugly head for the first time when you are facing your spoil board. And that is because you're using a large tool like I have right here. This is a 30 millimeter face, almost. That's a 30 millimeter facing tool that I have right here and trying not to drop it. Um, yeah, that will make a nice staircase pattern on your spoil board and you're asking, hey, what is going on here? So that has to do with the spindle trimming and that is only the tilt of the spindle. So there's also a knot and that knot actually we need to work on as well. So step one is that we need a known flat surface and I will show you what I use here in a second. But the big difference is that if you are lining the head, for example, on a bridge board, milling machine, then the golden rule or the golden reference basically will be the table of the machine. It's precision machined and it is straight. Now on our router, nothing is straight. If you have a DIY machine, I tell you that any axis of that looks like a banana if you start looking closely. So that is why we need a flat surface in the first step and I use for that a glass plate. So let's talk about the tools for a moment that you will need. So number one is a glass plate. This glass plate here is float glass. Um, I could not get that locally, believe it or not. And so I ordered this from Amazon. It belongs to a sharpening kit. I think it's called Scary Sharp or so. This is float glass and it's dead flat. So it's called float glass because it is floating on top of molten metal, making it dead flat. And it's relatively thick also. Now, if you have a mirror, then you could also potentially use that mirror if you can get access to the back side of it. So not the front of the mirror, the back of the mirror is also dead flat. Now, a a glass, a piece of glass out of a picture frame or so will not work. For number one, it's too thin, it bends actually relatively easy and it's also not flat. So one of the tools that I see quite frequently that people use for trimming, for spindle trimming, is this SST trimming tool. So this gets inserted into the spindle and then it comes also with two dial indicators, one on the left and one on the right, and then you start spinning this around. Uh, it's about around $100. And let me show you so that is from SST, there's a second one, I think it's made by Edge Technologies, that's um, very similar. Both of these are good, but let me show you an alternative. So if you're a woodworker, then I like to suggest this Align It kit. That's how it is spelled, Align It Deluxe Kit. And you can use it on your table saw and you can use it on trimming for the router or also on trimming the table of your drill press, for example. And of course the SST will work on that scenario as well. Anyways, have a look at this one as well. It's a little bit more expensive. I got this one here, I'm fairly sure at Woodcraft or Rockler. If I find it on Amazon, I'll leave you a link. Now, if you have neither one of those two, the problem that I have with the SST or Edge technology, it just has one use. And once you tramp your spindle in, it's gonna lay around. Now the dial indicator you can use. So if you have neither one of those and you need to make an investment, I like to suggest just this here. Let me put that away. So that is a magnetic base. And can you see it? A magnetic base, a hydraulic locking arm and a dial indicator. Doesn't need to be a digital one. A regular dial indicator will just do fine. Now, if you have a dial test indicator, that will also work. The nice thing with this is that it will have multiple uses on your machine for just a lot of stuff that you will come back to this tool all the time if you work on your machine, trying to find out um, if things are aligned. 
So chances are that you will need a shim in this process. For aligning the glass plate later on, I'm just gonna use paper shims, that is fine, and also an aluminum shim. Now, if your spindle will need a shim in the back, then the aluminum foil here is fine, but if you have to fold that multiple times or use multiples of these, then if you go, I would say over 0.1 millimeter or so, go ahead and use shim stock. Now, I love these here. These are by Aloma, and let me show you why I like them so much. They are made from stainless steel. Let's have a closer look here. I need to cover my face, otherwise it's not gonna reference. Do you see that? Um, so, they go right around the bolt. So if you have a bolt like so, then these will go right around that bolt. And that is, I think, really important that you don't shim something in the middle of nowhere, but that right there where it's fastened, that is where you're going to place the shim. Now, be it the aluminum or this one. And also, if you need to buy something, then have a look if you have a feeler gauge at home that you can spare. Well, yeah, you have to cut off a piece of it, of course, but a feeler gauge will also make a really good shim if you have that on hand. So in step one, we are going to calibrate that glass plate parallel to the gantry and also parallel to the y-axis on the machine. And in step two, we are going to take a measurement of how the spindle sits out of tram in the knot and in the tilt position. And then in step number three, of course, we add the shims to that, we align it, and uh, we tighten everything in place and give it a final measurement. Here you see the dial indicator mounted into the collet. You don't have to do that. You can also mount it with the magnetic base under here. We don't need to be on the z-axis. However, we want to drive it with the x-axis. If this is your x-axis, we want to be able to drive it with that and also then of course forward and backward. The important part here is that I have in X and in Y the dial indicator straight. So that's the only thing that I'm looking for right here. And I'm, I'm, I like to be kind of like a little bit more towards the center line of the spindle, not having your dial indicator hanging out here for this very first step on calibrating the glass plate. So I set the glass plate on the shims and I like to start out with just one sheet of paper on each corner so that I get the glass plate back in the same position because we are going to move that plate a few times when we shim it. I'm just going to make a mark right here, that's good enough, and one right here so I have it back in that position. In addition, we're going to drive the indicator in every corner and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a circle right here and when we measure I like to be in that circle if we can. So to find a reference point of these four corners, I'm gonna to go to each one of those and I will choose the highest point as my reference point where I zero out the dial indicator. So front right hand side is now zeroed out and let's go to the rear. We have a negative 0.18, so almost 0.2. Um, yeah, so for aluminum foil, that might be a little bit much. I'll try a paper shim here, and minus means the plunger is out, so we need to come up. Okay, let's do that. So with two paper shims, I have a negative 0.01, one one hundredth. I'm gonna leave that, and I'm gonna go to the other corners and just keep going around until I have a tolerance uh, that is acceptable, probably like a couple hundreds of a millimeter or so. I changed the strategy a little bit. I have now a shim, as you can see here on the right hand side, there on the left hand side, and one in the center. Um, if I have two in the back, I start to get a teeter totter and I didn't want to fight that. So there's three. The dial indicator you can see here is at zero. If I now drive the y axis to the front, don't pay attention to what happens in between. That's a different issue. So actually we are having zero right here as well. And now let's go over to the left side. I have a zero right here as well. And now going back to 
the rear, this is a little up. So I have about one hundredths or two hundredths roughly. Last time it showed me one. So about two hundredths of a millimeter right there. That is okay. That's what we want. So now the glass plate is parallel to the x-axis and to the y-axis. And that was the goal. So it's calibrated to where we need it. So I've set the dial indicator now off center. And you can see the distance between the center line and the dial indicator. And I drive the dial indicator or the spindle so that when I swing this, I can reach both points. I can reach that point in the back and also the point in the front. Now, here's something important. I'm about right here and here because these are the two calibration points that we have. You might have noticed that when we drove from this point to this point that there was uh, some strange reading here and I told you, don't worry about this, just watch this and watch this. Now, the readings that we get here is probably not because the glass plate isn't flat, it is probably the x-axis has a bow in it. And I don't want to calibrate my spindle on an unknown reference dimension from that bow in my x-axis. So I'm going to go back to the front right hand and the back right hand spot. Okay, and so I swing it out of the way right here and I position it there. I zeroed it. I already did that. And so now I'm coming around and here I see about one one hundredths, maybe two hundredths, that my spindle now will be tilted um, in this direction. So two hundredths of, you know, how many millimeters is that? Let's say that's about 110, 120 millimeters. That's 240 millimeters in between here. So two hundredths, that is plenty accurate. We don't have to touch that. I'm going to leave it. So I have the spindle about in the center of my two points in the front and I have the dial indicator again offset and it's not facing me so I use my phone here to actually set this value now to zero and I don't think you can, I don't think actually you can see it in the camera. That was my whole point that you can see it's zero. Well. I can't get that on camera right now, but it is zero and we zeroed it out. And now we're going to swing this around without moving anything. That is the main objective here. Don't move anything. And when we come back to on the, our point right here, actually I had minus one one hundred. So actually here it is zero. So the tilt here on my spindle is um, very good calibrated. I definitely not going to touch that. So for a moment, let's assume that my spindle is leaned forward and then tilted to the left. The very first step to do is to get the nod out, so this way. And I'll do that by just adding chimp stock behind the lower two screws on both sides until I have the reading of the nod showing me that my spindle is straight. Once I'm done with that, what I will do is I will work on the tilt next. The way to work on the tilt, the easiest is if you, in this particular case here, I have four screws and the easiest is if you just loosen three of those screws. Let's say we're going to keep this one here fastened and I am going only to slightly loosen this just a little bit. And then if, if it is leaning, then I can start to tap up here or up here to bring the spindle in the straight position. Now you can also use a clamp actually and move this. So basically set a clamp from here to here and then with the clamp you can easily adjust that. Um, some machines have also a cam on uh, a screw so the, you will see that there is a fastener that looks a little different if you purchase your machine and on that cam you can also adjust that tilt and that is also an accurate method of okay that is it for this episode so now i hope that you can also get those nice 
mirror finishes on your aluminum parts and of course perfect parts on your woodworking projects as well. So take care and I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye.